How to build your own malware analysis lab. This is the second part of two parts uh, series where we talk about how you can build your own malware analysis lab. And in this video, we'll talk about the tools. So the previous video, we talked about the network configuration and how to run your, uh, how to build a virtual machine where you can run your malware safely. And today we'll talk about the malware analysis tools that we're going to use. The first thing, after you have installed the virtual machine, you need to make sure that you have installed the uh, virtual box additions tools or the vmware additional tools and these tools you will get uh, you will get like messages from the app itself from vmware or virtualbox to install these tools and these tools will help you to uh, to easily communicate with your host machine to make your virtual machine easily communicate with the host that could be copy files from your host and directly pasting it to the to the virtual machine or it can help you as well drag drop files and um, easily to move the mouse between the virtual machine and the host machine and so much more. So this is the first thing you need to install. The second thing is that when you have um, when you have a sample, when you download the sample from the internet, a malware analysis sample, either from any Detron or virtual to uh, virus total if you have access to, or hybrid analysis or any other um, other website, you will get the sample. Uh, zip uh, in, in in a zip file and the zip file will have a password mostly infected as a password so you don't need the first thing you don't need to extract or you have to not extract the zip file in your host machine you have to drag the whole zip file and or copy and paste it inside the virtual machine itself the only issue you will face when you do that is is that when you try to extract the zip file on your windows a virtual machine, uh, the, the Microsoft default or the Windows default ZIP uh, tool will not be able to extract a password protected ZIP file. You will need to install either WinRAR or 7 ZIP to be able to extract this files. So this is the first, the second tool you need to install. After that, after you extract the files, now you want to analyze that file. Let's assume that this is this file is an exe file that you need to analyze. There will be um, a process that you will have to go through to analyze this malware. The first step is to uh, perform basic static analysis. To perform basic static analysis, you will need a tool like PE Studio, and PE Studio will help you see uh, the the settings of this file, how this file is created, what's called the PE header, um, is this packed or not, and will give you a lot of information about the malware. Uh, as well, it will include the strings, the Windows commands, or the APIs it's using with the operating system, and much more. So this is the first tool for your basic static analysis. And the second one, you will need to install Resource Hacker. Resource Hacker helps you to, uh, to, to read any additional resources in the file, including another executable file or another zip file that this malware drops. It works, it helps a lot to understand droppers and to extract additional files from them. A third file you will need to install is could be UBX. UBX is a good tool to unpack uh, malware has been packed with UBX, which is a very, very known uh, backer. You can also have some generic unbackers as well if you trust one of them. And last, you would like you, it would be really useful to have an hex editor, either 010 uh, editor or uh, or ultra edit, which is not free, but you can still look into it as an option in hex workshop and all of these different tools. So that's for the basic static analysis. And if you want to run this malware to see its behavior, there is two options you're gonna run this malware, either without an internet without connecting it to the internet at all. And in this case, you're gonna use a tool called FakeNet. FakeNet as a tool helps you to to basically simulate there's there's an internet. FakeNet will will create an HTTP server for any if you if the malware is connecting to a specific website, the uh, FakeNet will uh, will act as it's the server and will send a response to the malware and it will fake a com an HTTP communication. Also, it will fake DNS communication if the malware tries to know uh, any DNS or any uh, IP for different uh, websites, as well it will fake all the IP communication. Everything is like a real internet is there. The only thing is that all the responses from FakeNet, as you can imagine, 
fake. So the malware will not really get a response that it wishes it, it, it should be or wishes it would be, which is the attacker response, the same format that the attacker will respond to the messages. But at least you will see the malware requests and you can analyze this part of the malware. The second uh, type of tools, uh, the second option is basically running the malware uh, with the internet communication. If that's the case, you will need to install at least Wireshark or network uh, Microsoft Network Monitor. Wireshark or Microsoft Network Mo Monitor helps you to see the internet communication, download the BCAB of all of this communication, and uh, analyze this uh, BCAB later on. With Microsoft Network Monitor, it helps you to see which process connects to what domains, and it can help you narrow down to what the malware is connecting to, or understands what could be the, the malware has injected inside, what processes the malware has injected into or started, and you can have more understanding of the whole network communication. Both tools are really useful. I prefer most of the time Wireshark, except if I don't know what's the malware happening or what's happening on this machine, mostly it's already an infected machine and I use Microsoft Network Monitor. You can always analyze this backup file on your host machine later on if you want to. So that's for the network. If you want to see the malware behavior, you can use Process Monitor, which is a really known tool to analyze the malware behavior. Uh, there is also another tool to see the list of running processes and understand their relationship together. Um, it's way more advanced than Task Manager. There is a tool called Process Explorer, which is from Microsoft from Sys Internals tools. And there is also another uh, tool called Process Hacker. It's not from Microsoft, but it is a really, really useful tool. And you can take memory dumps of different uh, processes if you want to, to analyze the malware after it decrypted itself and seeing its memory contents. As well, it can help you see uh, which process created from which parent, and you can see the whole process tree, you can see the running threads, loaded DLLs, and much more. So this is for running the malware. There is way more additional tools, but just for the for the sake of time, we will have these uh, tools. Um, and the, in Sys internals, there's way more tools that are useful, something like autoruns, for example, that can tell you how the malware is maintaining persistence, and much, much more. For code analysis, if you're going to run the malware and analyze its code while it's running, you will need to have a, what's called a debugger. And there's two most known debuggers, Oli Debugger and X64 Debugger. I recommend X64 Debugger to be installed at least because this tool is open source, more updated, and can analyze both, both 32 and 64 uh, malwares. Oli Debugger, especially 1.10, version which is the older version is actually really useful in having so many plugins that you can you can use and you can add to your OLI debugger and can make it way more powerful so you can use either of these or you can install both for um for analyzing the code without running the malware either pro or either free can be a really great tool either free has its own debugger but it's not the most known for its debugger it's mostly known for analyzing the sample directly uh, on the without running the code as well as you can use uh, another tool from NSA I think NSA which is called Ghidra and it's a very very known uh, tool it's open source and with Ghidra uh, it has two additional features on IDA which is basically or IDA free which is the ability to decompile code into C uh, into C, uh, C++ and as well the ability to run uh, different uh, Python scripts or uh, Java scripts to analyze, not Java scripts, but Java uh, code, most importantly, Python code that helps you to automate different analysis tasks. And it's really, really a helpful tool. Uh, with Python, there's IDA Python, but it's only available in, in IDA Pro, which is, which is very expensive. So you're going to use Ghidra uh, in replacement. And um, both tools are really, really great. And as you can imagine, you will need to install Python as well on your virtual machine. You will need to install Python 3.10 or 11, whatever the, the last version is. And probably you will need Python 2.7 for one specific tool, which is volatility. Well, after you do code analysis, there is also one additional way to analyze the sample, which is through the memory forensics. Uh, taking a snapshot of the whole memory and analyzing the memory helps you to see a lot of things you might not have seen while you're analyzing the malware in a debugger, which is basically seeing if there's any process injection, API hooks, or different things that happened on the system. 
as well you can get a dump of the whole process completely decrypted in memory uh, if it was encrypted or packed and as well with all the strings and all the text that might have been decrypted through the way uh, and as well in response coming from the attacker so you can see a lot of different things in the memory there and memory forensics is a really really helpful and easy tool to use you can use volatility or volatility 3 volatility uses python 2.7 uh, it's still a very solid tool and as well it has a lot of plugins that are really really helpful while volatility uh, 3 uses python 3 and it's a new it's catching up and uh, it gonna be a really solid tool as well so this is the tool volatility you can use volatility directly on the memory of the virtual machine and you can do that by pausing the virtual machine go to the folder where you have this virtual machine being created inside your host machine you go to your host machine and you go to the folder where you created the virtual machine in the first place and you will see a file called something dot vmem and this is basically the memory of your virtual machine and you can take a copy of that analyze it directly with your uh, volatility and if you don't want to mess with all of this and you want to just you know don't want to work with the with the virtual machine uh, files and stuff like that you can directly take a snapshot of the memory inside the virtual machine using dump it as a tool it's a very known tool by comeo i think I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, Dumbit is a really easy tool to take a, a snapshot of the memory. Another alternative is WinPmem, WinPmem, and uh, it's one word WinPmem, and this tool helps you to take um, to take a memory snapshot. It's even better than Dumbit in the idea that it takes a memory and it also it takes the, a copy of the memory and as well the page file which is the, the, the memory that's being saved on the hard disk. So you can have a full image of what's happening on the memory. And you can use volatility on both their outputs and analyze the memory and understand what's happening in that memory. So that is just an example of the most important tools that you might need on your virtual machine. There is way more additional tools that can help you through. We only talked about the executable files, the exe files. You might need other, to, uh, you might need other tools for other types of files like .NET files or or Java files or uh, or Android applications or any of these. And actually. We have in our malware analysis training, we, we provide all the students a complete virtual machine, a memory analysis lab with over 100 uh, tools installed and configured to, to directly use them. We have them installed, we have all the configurations ready, we have all the plugins and all the settings being prepared so you can directly use them. And we also provide you through the training a lot of samples that we explain in the videos samples to do as a homework with their uh, with their full analysis in a workbook and as well other additional samples have been analyzed by our students with their analysis as well so it's really really a lot of things you can a lot of samples to practice and learn and build that a uh, muscle to to analyze malware without uh, any second thought and if you get stuck or you feel this malware is intimidating or i don't know what to do with this new sample we always have a uh, bi month bi monthly uh, zoom calls means every second uh, every second uh, week we do have zoom calls where you can share the screen where you can get my analysis my insights and my help to get you unstuck and move on on your training i will put the link for that training down below it's called the malware uh, instant response training which we cover a little bit of instant response and as well malware analysis we cover network forensics and much more check it out and see you in the next video bye bye